Welcome back to Livestream Hub. I'm Skater at J3 and Corporate Sustainability Manager here at GreenViz. And I'm joined with Wawa Gatheru. That is not the correct pronunciation. Please correct me. Gatheru. <laughs> Gatheru. Oh, Wawa Gatheru um, and Deja Odom today. Um, and this is our last segment on Livestream Hub. I'm a little bit sad, but I'm happy that we saved the best for last, in my opinion. Oh. Um, so, Wawa, Deja, could you both introduce yourselves and just tell our audience a little bit more about what you do and what brought you here? Um, hi, I'm Deja. Uh, I recently graduated from the Bren School of Environmental Science last June and got my master's degree. And I will be an incoming fellow. I'm not sure if I can say where yet, but um, in DC uh, for an ESG company. And I am a Green Biz 24 Emerging Leader. So this is my first conference and my first Green Biz, and I'm very excited to be here. So you're all so excited to have you. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wawa Githero. I am a Gen Z climate activist and the proud founder and executive director of the national nonprofit Black Girl Environmentalist. We are working to empower the next generation of climate leaders of color, particularly Black women and Black gender expansive folks, with a focus on early career individuals that have zero to 10 years of experience. Deja is one of the incredible members of BGE, um, and we are um, really a community. We're a climate squad of different folks that are really invested in loving a better world into existence, and it is also my first Green Viz. Yay. So excited to be here. Phoenix is such a special city, and I wish I was here longer. Yeah. I'm so glad both of you are able to join for Green Biz and you both bring such interesting perspectives, even though you're in the same organization working to advance some of the same efforts. Deja, you're um, a recent, like you mentioned, EDF uh, Climate Core graduate. Is that the word for it? Uh, so like a master's grad, but an EDF Climate Core fellow. Fellow. Yeah. OK, that is how it is. And then, of course, uh, Wawa, you're, you know, this uh, powerhouse doing this amazing work with your nonprofit. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know about the Emerging Leaders Program that Deja is a part of, it is um, Green Business Program that advances BIPOC um, young professionals in the sustainability space. And I was a former Emerging Leader, fun fact. So it's really great to have both of you here and, and talking about this subject and particularly talking about what it means to be Gen Z in the climate space. This is a topic that's close to my heart as I am uh, a young professional in this space. And have found barriers um, of entry, which I'm sure we both can, we all can relate to, where um, you know we have a lot of fresh perspective. Our generation feels a lot of ego anxiety, a lot of responsibility to fix um, some of the most of the problems that were left to us to address, um, but are oftentimes not taken as seriously in the space because we're young and we don't have that corporate experience, we don't have that uh, those years under our belt. So. How have you guys navigated that, and, and what are you working to advance in this space? It's a loaded question. <laughs> you going to go first? I think I, I have a very untraditional path um, because I work full-time with Black Girl Environmentalist, and I guess my first full-time job is, is running a team of full-time and part-time staff. So even myself, I haven't necessarily had the experience in uh, – the corporate ESG space or the traditional climate and environmental nonprofit space. I have as like an intern or a fellow, um, but even in my limited time there, um, there have been things that I have noticed which led me to take more of an action-oriented approach to creating an organization that's working to address a lot of these inequities that exist, particularly around pathway and retention for um, black women and black gender expansive folks. So we know that people of color make up nearly 40% of the U.S. population, but we don't exceed a 12 to 16% green ceiling in the climate sector. And that statistic is probably lower because that is a Green Report 2.0. That is voluntarily um, something that people opt to take. So there are tons of folks that actually don't um, fill out that, that, that survey and that assessment. So particularly with Gen Z, you're completely right. Like we are uniquely... Um, interested in this space primarily because we are the first generation that truly grew up with climate being the backdrop of our lives. I first heard the term global warming when I was five years old. I was watching An Inconvenient Truth and terrified. Stressed and, out. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of us really see this work as not just being a means to an end in regards to our livelihoods, but as a requirement for us to really be able to have a future and to potentially bring children into the world if that's what we choose to do and just bringing up the next generation. So 
with Gen Z, I think that um, what we're asking for in regards to older generations is to be taken seriously, is for our expertise to be really valued. Because the reality is, is that we have a lot of unique qualities about us as young people. For example, we know how to navigate the digital terrain. For better or worse, we grew up with these technologies. We know how to communicate with people in new and different ways. And we do that very, very well. Um, we're also addressing these issues differently because we are saddled with them. The policies and practices that we put in place now are going to impact our futures. Many of the leaders in the leading organizations will not be living out the policies that they do put forth or do not put forth. So I think that generational perspective is so critical, it's so important, and it's something that has to be valued. Yeah, absolutely. Deja, what's your take on it? Um, wow, you said a lot of that was like amazing that I'm trying to kind of go off of. And I think the last thing with like digital navigation. Yeah. So even though you felt like you took a like more unconventional route of coming out of school and then like running, like going straight into BGE, for me, I've always been like, well, I haven't actually had my first big girl job in sustainability, right? Like I've been fortunate to get now like my second fellowship and I've had other internships. Um, but my way into sustainability was honestly just, I don't know, by accident and by undergrad, like working at my office of sustainability and then by talking to people and learning like the disconnect that some like older generations and Gen Z, some people, because not everybody really understands this field, even though we are growing up in it. And it is affecting all of us. Not everybody feels connected to it and feels that it's like an issue that they know how to solve. Um, and so like that's how I found my love is like through sustainability communication and talking to other people. And how Wawa said, like, I'm also into digital, you know, networking and digital communications and would like to, um, you know, start a sustainability account and like an Instagram and a TikTok and, and talk to people that look like me and people that don't look like me yeah. and kind of explain to them about sustainability and introduce them to that topic and, and kind of bring the bridge the gap essentially uh, in, in ways that they think might not exist. That is such a good point. Like I feel like TikTok, social media, um, being able to communicate through these different mediums is such a superpower of our generation. I mean, Wawa, you, uh, speaking of campaigns and communication, I mean, you've been featured in Essence Magazine, Vogue, Teen Vogue, Glamour. You were recently in a um, photo shoot with Billie Eilish. I mean, that is a huge way to bring amplification to the issue of environmentalism and sustainability and, and Gen Z's role in that. What advice do you both have for companies looking to engage with Gen Z? Um, while on stage, you mentioned climate quitting and how the importance of having a strong foundation in values is a key thing that our generation looks for when looking for an employer. And Deja, I know you've echoed some similar sentiments. I mean, what advice do you both have for companies looking to hire and uh, really develop the workforce of Gen Z? Yeah, so actually, like we just talked about this at our table, and I think one great way people can do it is through LinkedIn. It's like I was saying how we as Gen Z spend a lot of time networking and putting ourselves out there and being like, this is my story, you know, coming up with our elevator pitches. And we know we put our taglines on things and we're like, hire me essentially, right? I want to work for you. And I think that it could be reciprocated, you know, just kind of, there's so many people that I found just by searching and stumbled across them. And I'm like, can I please talk to you? Can we just have a conversation? And I think the same thing could kind of happen back. It doesn't always have to be a recruiter, per se, like a hiring manager. Anybody could kind of just come back and access the same question and reach out. Yeah. Um, I'd say there is a new avenue, I think, for businesses to um, really put their money where their mouth is in regards to ESG investing. So climate philanthropy, I don't think I had an opportunity to talk about this on stage, but with climate philanthropy, we see that there is there are gaps in who gets funding and where the money is being sourced. Climate's the least funded issue item out there. And even within the climate giving space, organizations that are led by people of color receive 1.3% of funding. Youth-led organizations receive 0.76% of funding. Black-led nonprofits 
75% of us have a general operating budget of less than $500,000, with more than half of them operating at an annual budget of less than $30,000. So there's a lot of disparities. And for young people, when we're looking at businesses and thinking about where we want to put our dollar or where we want to work, we want to see organizations that are being very intentional with where their investing is going and how they're um, contributing to philanthropy. So be more intentional with who's receiving money when you're engaging in that space and really make sure that you are uplifting frontline um, communities and organizations that are led by communities that are creating solutions as a means of survival and really need the capital to be able to scale the work that is so important for the future that we're all collectively going to be a part of. Absolutely. And I think you mentioned a really good point of like, as a corporation, rather than starting something from the ground up in your own foundation, support the foundations that already exist, support the foundations that are doing the good work that so many of us already align with um, and, and amplify that. So I, I really appreciate that perspective. And I wish we had another 10 minute segment to do. But um, thank you so much, Wawa and Deja for being here and being so involved and participating so well with the Greenbiz community. This is the face of Gen Z and I'm so proud to be a part of it. So thank you both. Thank you. Hello.